Arsenal obviously drew against Chelsea. So let's see what's happened from a tactical point of view. Let's get into it. Maresca against Mikel Arteta was always going to be a game, in my opinion, of both teams kind of cancelling each other out tactically in a game that would be filled with fine margins. Now, admittedly, I thought both teams would concede a lot more because both teams can't buy a clean sheet. But it was quite interesting from a tactical point of view. Both teams initially kind of were in a 4-4-2. And then when you break it down and you look at Chelsea's build-up play versus our press, there's a lot of interesting sound bites. You know, typically when Sanchez had the ball, you'd have Fufana kind of offer an option. Gusto, who is a right back, you know, would invert. Caicedo would slightly drop, as would Lavia naturally. That opens up, you know, Jackson because he's by himself. Naturally, we'd go forward and try and lead the press. You had Cole Palmer kind of playing in the pocket role, particularly staying with Thomas Partey. Now, the interesting thing for me was Gusto would stay in the inverted role when Caicedo and Lavia dropped. Fifana would obviously get as wide as possible. And it was really the young Levi Cole who was presenting issues for us people in that when we tried to press, simply put, you know, Nicholas Jackson would drop deep. And at times they were just passing through us. And that was something that caused a bit of an issue for us. I think we can all acknowledge that Arsenal have a serious problem when it comes to consistently and again on a consistent basis playing through central areas. Now, Martin Odegaard's obviously a step in the right direction. We've missed him and we ticked a bit better in that regards, obviously, with our captain. But I do think we've been found out a bit because of how we play out from the back and I do think some of it is circumstantial based on the profile of midfielder we have. We all know Partey of the midfield three is probably a unicorn in that he's the most likely to consistently split the lines. Now, as you can see, when Raya's got the ball, there's only so many times you can lump it to Havertz or knock it into the channels and work off Saka, or you didn't really see it on a consistent basis, but Raya lumping it into Havertz, Havertz getting the flick on and then Saka's on his bike. Now, typically in terms of our build-up play, we know our centre-half split, we know we've got an inverted left-back, you know, Benjamin White kind of does a bit of both in that regard. But naturally, you saw Rice drop at times into the six to offer a lane in addition to obviously the center half splitting parte at times would find himself on the left or the right naturally because we cannot play through central areas you know chelsea were more than happy to let our defenders have the ball knock it back to raya or the guards got a drop and i it must admit, I was impressed by Maresca's kind of tactical nous in that regards because, you know, Cole Palmer had a bit of a free roll. He would get right on Saliba. You would have like a like a four in midfield kind of behind him and somewhat uh, Jackson, you know, Caicedo, that's his bread and butter pressing. Lavia would follow Odegaard. And literally, you know, it's just backwards and we can't really get out of that kind of press or we can't really, you know, get our front three involved. From an Arsenal perspective, I did like the goal we scored purely because we started to press together. We've nicked it back on the right-hand side after Cucurella has kind of sold, you know, uh, Lavia short. Between Partey, Odegaard, Kai Havertz and Bakayo Saka, they've done quite well to nick it back. We've progressed play down Chelsea's left, our right-hand side. Wondergaard, the class region with a bit of magic. It's an ugly slash beautiful goal. It's a lovely delivery. To be fair, from a Chelsea perspective, Gusto is unaware of both Declan Rice and also Martinelli, but he's also doubled up against, if I'm completely honest with you. Madaweke needs to tuck in. Unfortunately for Chelsea, unfortunately at that moment for Arsenal, Odegaard delivers, Martinelli runs completely onside, puts the ball in the back of the net. We're not following runners. Enzo Fernandez and Pedro Neto have simply put play the one-two. Neto has run into the space. He's been given the ball by Enzo Fernandez and it's a terrific goal from a Chelsea perspective but a poor one from us because nobody is following runners and nobody's looking over their shoulders. Feels like fine margin seems to be the fee for Arsenal Football Club. It's those fine margins that evidently get us three points and more points on the board, allow our form to turn around and obviously win a league title. And to be within moments, exaggeration, but within moments of different contexts of beating Liverpool, Chelsea and obviously uh, Manchester City, I must admit, I don't want to be doom and gloom, but I do kind of feel, as you can see via my tweet, those kind of moments for me make or break a season and I can play a difference as to whether you win the title or not. Now, Nick, Nicholas Jackson, apologies, and Kai Havertz obviously had disallowed goals, potentially could have stayed on side. I believe Mikel Moreno had a good cameo in what he's expected to do on a football field. And I think he got into the box and actually one of our most potent stages towards the end of the game as we were chasing that equal, that winner, apologies, was when Moreno was on the, on the pitch. And, you know, I'm not getting that in, but he could have had a hat-trick. I think he had a good cameo. He's been somebody that's obviously 
obviously been in line for a lot of criticism from some Arsenal fans. You know, Trossard, again, he needs to keep his head up. You don't become a hero or villain overnight. You're not as good as you think you are when things are going great. Likewise, you're not as bad as you think you are when things are going wrong. That being said, he missed two sitters, I believe, against Chelsea. Was quite wasteful in the game against Chelsea. And I'm not getting that in, but he did miss a penalty in the Champions League. He did get sent off against Manchester City and he did kind of sulk against Aston Villa. So he is kind of down on his luck currently. We also have to be very lucky that towards the end of the game, Chelsea didn't score um, off their own back. And also their goal scorer player that we wanted in Pedro Neto, who evidently bagged, didn't get an assist in the first half for Gusto. So I do think it's a case of a point gained and a fair result for both teams. But I also believe both teams will sit there and say, what if they defended better? What if these chances went their way and they could have got three points? Feels like such a long time ago that we are actually won in the Premier League in which we beat Southampton. We've still not won in four. Liverpool are running away with the title at this moment. Manchester City are in a bit of a bad patch like us, but we've not been able to capitalise and we've not been able to go into an international break with a win. And the longer it goes on, the more you think is there a monkey on our backs. Now, again, that we have played 11 games like everybody. We have to keep calm people. I'm not saying keep calm because we're going to win the Premier League. It's just a week is a long time in football. There's been 11 game weeks. You look at Manchester City, they're still, for all the talking points about Liverpool and about Manchester City, the data says they're only five points off Liverpool. If Liverpool go out and lose their next two games, depending on results, and Manchester City win their next two games, which they've got Spurs next, I hope they win, um, where, where are we at now? You can't draw too many conclusions at, at this moment in time. Currently, we sit fourth with nine points. We need to stop the rut. We need to get points on the table. And I think many people on one hand would say, you know what, drawing against Chelsea isn't the worst. Um, but at the same time, we haven't won in four. We're trying to chase back um, our points. We're trying to keep up with Manchester City and Liverpool and the draw or two points drop doesn't help us. Now, I don't want to be harsh and this is just my own thoughts. And of course, there's different reasons and contexts and things of that ilk, people. But I've seen us take the lead against Manchester City, take the lead against Liverpool, take the lead against Chelsea, take the lead against Brighton. And I'm being quite harsh, but we drop points from winning positions and we need to go on a run now. The, you know, it is out of our hands at this moment in time. All we can do is go on a run and let talking points decide. But with that being said, let me know your thoughts on Arsenal versus Chelsea. Don't forget to check out the rest of the content. Stay safe, stay blessed. Peace.